You haven't found your way here by accident. It's a unique and meaningful connection meant to deliver the impactful message of Apostle Joshua Selman to your doorstep. This message carries the potential to not only bless you, but also inspire you for greatness. Open your heart wide and allow your mind to embrace the richness of this transformative message. Before we delve further, I extend a warm invitation for you to actively engage with this significant message. Join in by liking the video, sharing it with those in your circles who might find it beneficial, and subscribing to our channel for a consistent flow of insightful content. Your support is genuinely appreciated and plays a crucial role in our ability to continue sharing these meaningful messages. As you tune in to absorb this special message, may blessings overflow into your life. Embrace the profound wisdom offered by Apostle Joshua Selman, and let this encounter be a beacon of inspiration and positive change in your life's journey. Your openness to receiving this message can be a transformative step toward a more enriched and purposeful life. There are three ways that God helps a man. Number one, he shows him his mercy. Number two, he gives him access to men. Number three, he introduces him to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. These are the three ways men are primarily helped by God. The mercy of God is one way he helps. The gift of men, he will help you through men. And number three, he will open you up to the ministry of the Holy Spirit who is called the helper. For some of you right now, you would have become in a greater measure, but demons have manipulated the ministry of helps. Men never show up to help you. Especially the younger people, the youth in this church, Church. if you are going to be like Jesus timing matters timing matters are we together there is a time to invest in your destiny invest in your destiny make a commitment that you are cutting away distractions you have seen that there is an apostolic mandate a prophetic mandate an entrepreneur mandate God has told you you'll be a leader of leaders wishing and seeing it as a vision and writing it in a book is only as good as it gets until you stand up and put it to work when it has to do with destiny actualization timing matters this is why god gives us advantages like restoration and speed because he knows that by default something would have tampered with our time hallelujah it takes time to know god it takes time to become genuinely anointed it takes time to understand scripture are we together it takes time to convince yourself that you are a blessing to the world and not a cause. Start it now. For someone, God is speaking to you already. You came to church and God is saying, I've been trailing you for five years. This, your unseriousness is going to punish your family and punish the people who are looking up to you. The reason for that is because there is a prophetic mandate upon you and God has been patient with you. Time to come to church, you are not interested. Bible study, you are not interested. Prayer, you are not interested interested and God is saying for every time you tell me no you are also telling many people no I hope I'm speaking to an apostle listening I hope I'm speaking to one prophet listening I hope I'm speaking to one evangelist I hope I'm speaking to one kingdom financier hallelujah we live in a world where people like to celebrate dreams and visions and keep it there for 10 20 years they are still celebrating dreams and visions it is often said that the only way to make a dream come to pass is to wake up. But provided you are still dreaming, you will keep downloading intentions that will never come to pass. Hallelujah. If you are Esther, are you going to fail in your assignment? If you are Elijah, are you going to fail in your assignment? If you are Mary, Will you rob us of seeing Jesus? Are we together? If you are Anna the prophetess, are you going to pray diligently until Jesus comes? I made up my mind as a covenant with my destiny that whatever role I have to play, as far as making my contributions to the body of Christ is concerned, I will use my lifetime to make that happen. And this is why you see myself spend myself and I'm spent doing the things that I do first because I love this Jesus but then because I love his body and I realize that if destinies are connected to me in truth then I must make the determination 
that I will not let those destinies fail. For someone, God is speaking to you. By now, if you were serious five years ago, you would have found the keys to wealth by now. By now, you would have started sponsoring conferences based on God's calendar for you. You are already behind time. That means in this conference, you buy books. If you are 30, 35, 40 years and you've not started destiny and you are friends with an 18-year-old person sleeping and waking up together, that person has the advantage of time. He will repent when he's 20 and still has time. You are already 40. The time is against you. It means you will double up in your productivity. Am I challenging someone? When someone by far younger than you is buying one book, you buy two or three because time is against you. You got born again at 30. Okay, I understand. Thank God you are born again. But it takes a long time. The person who got born again at 30 and the one who got born again at 7, the advantage they have is not the same. Spiritually it is, but in terms of time, if all of you are mentored under the same pastor, in 10 years that gentleman will be 17 and you are going to be maybe 40. Is God speaking to us? Yes. If God intended for you to rise to an executive level and you realize that assignment by the time you are 50, you have 10 or 15 more years in the civil service. And because you did not give the kind of effort you should have given, not knowing it was in your prophetic destiny, you will need an advantage. So when you hear teachings about favor, you listen twice. Because there is already something that is against you. Let me speak to someone already in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God everything that does not make your life look like the portrait of Jesus to the nations no matter what it is it dies here permanently shout a believing amen it dies here permanently Jesus was always prayerful. That means every spirit of prayerlessness that has trapped your life, allowing you to grow older without spiritual investment, I curse that spirit right now. From age 12, Jesus was at the temple, already learning. Maybe by the time you were his age, your parents were not even saved. And so you already had a disadvantage. I pray for you in the name that is above all names. That whatever it is that makes you to not have an appetite for the word. Spiritual laziness. Let it be caused right now. Do you know? I've studied the life of Jesus. I never saw Jesus with friends. Until he got the apostles. Disciples. What he did do as a teenager. I mean, he was a young man like every other person wanting relationships. You see, love is a command, but relating with everybody is not. You have to take a, you have to be determined in your life that for the sake of what is on my head, I'm wrapping up now, and the sake of where I'm going, I will have to edit certain relationships. Don't say we're born together. That's nonsense. Anybody who becomes a representation of an antichrist system in your life, this is the system. You don't have to fight them, but you have to create room enough for the sake of where you are going. When God called Abraham, he went together with his relatives. But when he got to the base of the mountain, he said, I've gotten to a point where I have to go alone. I love you. We have come this far. Stay back. You will love me too much to not allow me obey God if you go with me. There are people who love you too much, they will not allow you pray. When you are fasting as a young man, they'll say this is too much. Whereas they don't know the destiny that is on your head. You pray for 10 minutes, they say, no, 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 this is too much. Whereas they don't know what you are, you are standing in to stop over your family and over the nations. Again, I pray for you. Every wrong relationship around your life that is stopping you from becoming a manifestation of the Lord Jesus Christ I curse it right now shout a believing amen I curse it right now now listen to me you would think that because Jesus was the son of God apostles are automatically he will be born and he will start his assignment not even Jesus escaped the law of process for 18 years from the time he became a teenager from age 12 the Bible was silent about Jesus until he was 30. Jesus, as we know, was building capacity 
and by the time he was 30 guess what satan still did not leave him i pray for you the kind of preparation that you need to make for some of you you are behind time you've never read any book here you are not making sowing to the spirit making the kinds of investments that design a great destiny in the name of jesus may god show you mercy and give you speed show you mercy and give you speed show you mercy and give you speed three more prayers for you i want you to please receive it hallelujah now hear me one thing i see in the life of jesus is that he never lacked helpers even when he was going to the cross at every given point in his life they were helpers when the people came to embarrass him as touching financial issues even a fish produced coin when you want to become like jesus you must understand the mystery of the help of god when i was coming into this church i've seen it many times but it occurred to me again a people that have been helped by god ebenezer apostle i don't know how my destiny should look like look unto jesus he has become the portrait for you are we together was he killed before his assignment finished his dying was part of the process of the assignment that was why it was not weakness or limitation that means like jesus you have a right to place a demand and say no power my god no force no enchantment against my destiny will take my life before my time are we together number two did jesus fulfill his assignment yes that means every one of us should fulfill our assignments, our portions of assignments that we call purpose. The roles that we have to play in that bigger picture. Jesus was focused and dedicated and determined. He did not come to the earth doing everything. He made his manifesto clear. Are we together now? Yes. That means if you find yourself doing too many things, it's proof that you are confused. You should be busy, but not busy doing too many things. There are few major things that actually define a man's life. Being busy doing too many things is a sign of lack of vision. Because one of the assignments of vision is that it creates focus. It coordinates your energy to target a few things and to achieve them. Hallelujah. He came as a portrait. Jesus was victorious satan could not defeat him even though he tried men tried and could not defeat him jesus was busy about he was not lazy that means every believer who is lazy is being antichrist antichrist is not only when you deceive people if you act in in a way and manner that is not consistent with the portrait given to you it is an antichrist behavior are we together i humorously say whether you choose to serve jesus or satan in any case none of them will accept you being lazy if you run away from jesus because you are lazy and come to satan he'll push you back you say you you can go because either ways diligence is demanded it doesn't matter who you serve <laughs> are we together when i found out that Jesus did not fail in his assignment I made a covenant with my life and my destiny that I will not fail in my assignment someone say I will not fail let the devil hear you hear me my worship people that means if God sent you here and sent you to a Belkuta and there are songs within your spirit and those songs should be like that's bringing revival if you don't bring those songs to us you have failed if there is somebody here who is supposed to be a kingdom financier and that is your prophetic destiny in your rising you see destiny is like a relay many people depend on your own succeeding to succeed if billy graham was not saved millions of preachers will not rise because their destinies were connected to his own are we together for every one of you listening to me now there are at least two people beyond yourself connected whose achieving and actualizing their destiny depends on your actualizing your own that means for every time you tell god i'm not serious with you you are punishing all those who have been connected to your grace 
for every time you tell the lord i'm not serious I, I, one day i'll think about this thing i hear you have a call upon my life let i will talk to you on that in 2027 you peg somebody else manifestation imagine if apostle chidume did not manifest what god has birthed in him all the sons and daughters and the people now who have risen on account of his apostleship will be at the mercy listen this is the reason why god can take the bishopric of men and give another and that's what he's doing this end time god is merciful but you will not indefinitely allow a generation suffer because of the carelessness of one person when you demonstrate that you are indefinitely not interested in growth and transformation he will honor your will but you will take that bishopric and give faithful men that was the mystery in the parable of the talents he collected from the one who did not see the value and gave the one you thought you would collect it and keep it no he collected it so you will find people who in this end time started as evangelists but later you will start seeing prophetic dimensions and say when did you become a prophet is because their faithfulness has earned them a stake because a prophet that was supposed to have risen and raised others decided as an act of his will that i will not be serious with god and God has seen that there are 10,000 other people tied to that grace. He will find the next available faithful vessel and trust with that responsibility. Are we learning? Jesus came as a portrait of what you should be. I never read my Bible, I'm wrapping up, and see a weak Jesus. Jesus was not weak. I do not see Jesus who ran away from demons, ran away from principalities. No. I saw a diligent Jesus who by age 12, when his teenage colleagues were roaming around, he was at the temple. Listen to me. Let me speak to... Do you know what it means to have the life of God? The life of God is not just another life that is greater than the earthly life. Please look at me, believers. The life of God is an indestructible life. Many believers do not understand the power of that life. There's what they call bulletproof vehicles. Please look at me. You can have an SUV and you can have a bulletproof version of it. Am I right on that? When you enter a typical bulletproof vehicle, if someone points a gun at you, you smile at the person because there is an orientation you have that between you and that person is not just a mere glass that person will shoot the gun several times and you'll just be smiling and waving at the person so when the bible says you have the life of god something has come into you that has stopped you from being ordinary now it takes revelation for that the reality of that life to come out because the same people who went to a herbalist over you before you were born again will still go even if you are born again what will make the difference is the life you have received not they are not going to a herbalist they will keep going you can't stop them unfortunately they have their wills and god will respect it but what immunes you is the presence of the life of god they shall take up deadly things it's only when we get to heaven we'll know how many poisons we have taken in our lives as men of god it's only when we get to heaven we'll know how many times the names i usually joke with my people i said only god knows how many people have carried my names to um Habalis and they shout joshua selman let him not wake up and and be alive for sunday and on sunday i'm back again <laughs> my god the life of god now i don't mean to sound arrogant you know how many charms i've held with these hands i'm not teaching you nonsense if I were pretending this thing, I would have been dead by now. Many times when people are tired, maybe they are repenting or they are, you know, their families are tired of all these things. They carry all those things and come to you as a man of God. Since we can't see God, you said you are the one who he sent. Please help us and know what to do with this. And you hear that this was something that was there before your grandfather was born. They now hand it over to you. <laughs> are we together yes, that the last person who held this thing did not even wake up <laughs> and here you are you hold it like a toy a piece of rag and nonsense and throw it away absolute nonsense and you throw it away you see that now or you see 
what gives power or what takes away power is your state and the revelation of it i have the life of god the same power that raised christ from the dead dwells in my mortal body that no enchantment and no divination this is the revelation that supports your confidence otherwise you will pick that thing and fall down with it say i have the life of god while discussing jesus say it again i have the life of god because ladies and gentlemen the world will keep getting evil arrows will keep flying by day noisome pestilences by night i tell you there are many kinds of kiss today that is not a kiss of love it's a judas kiss that kiss is not a sign of love it's a sign to the enemy that this is the one we want that will not finish this year mm. two women were sleeping according to scripture and one laid down on her child laid down on her vision laid down on her destiny and killed it and when she saw that she would not make it she exchanged the destiny with another one men for you if a mother can do that to the child human beings can do anything your immunity is not to keep crying and say you people should stop being wicked no shield yourself with the life of god do you believe what you're hearing you are a preacher you keep laying hands on people they are telling you these things are communicable diseases if you don't have a revelation of the life of god i promise you eventually hello eventually so before you stand before pharaoh make sure you have really seen the god who is sending you to pharaoh Moses said, I'm not going anywhere till you reveal yourself to me. I know who Pharaoh is. We grew up together. I will not go and disgrace myself in Egypt. Who shall I tell him has sent me? And he said, I am that I am. And Moses said, let's go. When he stood before Pharaoh, he said, Pharaoh, thus said the Lord God of the Hebrews, let my people go. And Pharaoh said, nonsense. You just get up and come after running away for 40 years. You come with a rod looking like somebody, a fugitive, and you think Egypt is that dull that just at a declaration of an old man they will release this the same way you stand before poverty and say poverty release my money and poverty say I was there before you were born <laughs> do you know the kind of audacity it takes to open that gate and the spirit will tell you your grandfather's tried knocking he knocked till he died your father tried knocking he knocked till he died for you who is this king of glory then you give them a reply hmm. the Lord strong and mighty that everybody who did ministry from your family they said they were called the spirit still killed them in shameful way everybody is afraid to take the mantle of ministry now that mantle is already looking for you better get the revelation of the life of God before you get to certain places and speak over destinies somebody will tell you my father is a witch is a wizard he said, don't worry, just come for the meeting. Make sure you have the life of God and you have a revelation of it. Hmm. Let me tell you the truth. There are certain calls that are very dangerous if you don't have revelation. You will not even live long. I tell you, ask any preacher who knows God. The spirits that will be assigned, there are spirits that are not assigned to men. They are assigned to mantles. They don't follow individuals. They follow certain graces because of what those graces will do. So before you stand before Pharaoh, you must have a revelation. Ladies and gentlemen, can I tell you, every area I know in Africa has some history of witchcraft, some history of whatever, from masquerades to the worship of the dead to whatever it is. Now you suddenly emerge out of nowhere and just carelessly say, I'm saved. And then you want to now spearhead something heavy for the kingdom it takes light some of the missionaries who came they had a sincere heart but they did not have light some of them never live to return say it again i have the life of god i am absolutely convinced that no man can take my life when my assignment is not done it's, my, it's a revelation 
it's, 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 it, I took time to meditate upon it. I truly believe that. You, you, you have no idea what this man standing before you has gone through in the spirit. If I were making empty noise, I would have been long dead by now. Long dead by now. There have been many times in my life, sir, about to take a trip and somebody will call me, maybe some dear friend and say, Apostle, please don't take this trip. I saw a ghastly motor accident and I saw you die. And these are people who are great. They are not just noisemakers. I know that's what the devil planned. But what then is the excellency of the life of God? The ability to rewrite your prophecy. Did you hear what I said? Rewrite your prophecy. Now, you don't just say, oh, I know. Mm -mm. What is your revelation? I lay me down and I slept. He said, I wait for the Lord sustain me. Who sustains? The Lord. The same Lord who sustains is the one who owns the earth. It's fullness. All the elements that are used for divination, they were his property. The earth, the sun. And he said, the sun will not be used against me the earth will not fight against me because i have a covenant with the stones every manipulation of witchcraft works based on elemental forces you have to use water earth sun fire without these elements the supernatural cannot work and already i have a covenant with all of them the owner put me in that covenant that the ecosystem should not hurt me on account of my status and my assignment Do you believe this? Hmm. So it says no enchantment. That whilst you are sleeping, somebody is saying your firstborn to your fourthborn, may they all die in your hands. And they are chanting it. And you find rest. You shake yourself like a warrior that you are. I have the life of God. An indestructible life an indestructible life i have a family relationship with god i'm not a stranger somewhere looking for access he is my father is the word pata source sustainer defender protector let me give you the final one so we'll find somewhere to pray someone is getting angry getting angry and saying so with the life of God, this thing that has been going on in my family, it's time to bring it to an end. Did you hear what I said? This issue of saying ladies get married and return back to their parents' homes. No matter how it has prevailed, I'm coming with the life of God to put a full stop and say this is where it ends. How about the ones that people get married and the woman is the man and the man is the woman? Huh? Have you had that kind of thing? No. The life of God. Listen, everything you are silent about, you have authorized it to continue in your life. Yes, sir. We give you, God, the highest praise from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same. We give you, God, the highest praise from the rising of the sun so number one the first assignment and mission of jesus was to come as an accurate revelation and a manifestation of the misunderstood god correcting our understanding about god number two jesus came to make the life of god accessible to all men by reconciling us to god number three why did jesus come listen to this he came as a model of god's expectation for man jesus came as a model of god's expectation for man john 14 12 a model of god's expectation for man he came as a model of God's expectation for man. You want to know how God expects you to live? Look at Jesus. He says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall also do, and greater works. Why greater? I've done a teaching on that. The reason why you will do greater works is because there are certain miracles that even Jesus himself could not perform. Do you know why? Because performing that miracle would demand him dying. 
and since he had not died for instance jesus could not give anybody eternal life before his death he could heal but everybody he healed still died the first person to receive eternal life was not by jesus it was by the apostles jesus was the basis for that eternal life nobody's sins could be indefinitely forgiven and god's life imparted in its fullness because it would demand death and jesus was still alive so when he says greater works there is one miracle jesus did not perform when he was on earth he raised the dead but he could not translate anybody from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son now with one declaration every believer can make that happen that's what makes the world greater not greater miracles there are many other miracles jesus did that were not recorded in this book john 20 30 and 31 so if you are talking about greater in terms of miracles or volume no nobody has fed five thousand people out of nothing yet that is a lifetime project for all of us so it's not talking about a greater miracle hmm. are we together say amen. amen have not gone through that process you are not saved period possible how about singing nice songs you are still not saved you are not bad salvation is not about being good or bad it's about a translation from one kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son are we together now the best person in the kingdom of darkness is still going to hell everybody say salvation i have the life of god I truly believe it with all my heart that I have the life of God. If you don't believe you have the life of God, you are not even going to be able to minister to the sick. You don't believe you have the life of God, there are many things you will not believe. I believe that I have the life of God. When you believe you have the life of God, then you can know that you are a life-giving spirit. When I prophesy upon you, I'm speaking from the overflow of that life. We I am confident that the sermons you've encountered have been a source of blessings, elevating your life and inspiring a heartfelt commitment to serving God wholeheartedly. We warmly invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, ensuring you stay connected and never miss any of our upcoming videos by activating the notification bell. Your subscription represents more than just a click. It signifies a commitment to continuous spiritual growth, enlightenment, and empowerment. Embark on this faith-filled journey with us as our channel aims to be a sanctuary for both spiritual seekers and believers alike. We firmly believe in the transformative power of God's Word, and our goal is to share messages that deeply resonate with your soul. Join our community, subscribe, and let the radiant light of divine wisdom illuminate your path. Thank you for being an integral part of this uplifting journey. And may God's abundant blessings overflow in your life. Amen. You can follow us on all our social media handles at Flaming Channel and visit our website at www.flamingchannel.com. Thank you. And may God bless you abundantly.